All right, I believe we are now live. I'm gonna set the chat to live chat so I hopefully don't miss any messages from any of you. Anyway, just decided to uh, get the uh, GO train on with uh, the uh, bi-level Bombardier cars. Jeremy Playtime, welcome to the live stream. i crank up the speed on this a little bit. Uh, how will retail exploration and rail fanning? Uh, why, hello, SMT. How's your day been so far? My day has been terrific. Real nice outside. Canadian Pacific and CN Model Railroading. Welcome to the live stream. GG1. Uh, okay, I guess that's a request. North American Model Trains, hello. Uh, hello from Australia. Welcome. Uh, North County or North Country Trains, hello. Hey, SMT, how's it going in Canada? Uh, not too bad. Got a viewer joining in from Texas. Good on you for buying the B Class. I am so happy with that new locomotive, I can't even tell you. Every time I come down here uh, and I see that thing up on the shelf, I just smile. Super cool locomotive. Definitely, uh, I think, one of my new favorites. Hello from Maryland. Hello from New Hampshire. Oh, that's a state I know. I uh, wonder if anybody can run the uh, triple header. Probably do a double header. Are you coming to Otter Valley on Saturday? I'm not sure. Not sure I'd like to, but uh, it's quite a long drive. How do you train, uh, change traction tires on a Union Pacific Rev Rossi Challenger? Ooh, um... You probably have to uh, unscrew the drivers. Usually, um, you can buy, I don't know if I have it right here to show you, but there's actually a special tool. Uh, it's this, I, I don't know the size, unfortunately, but uh, you can find these at most hardware stores. So you get something that's roughly the right size, or uh, just go in there with a pair of Needle Lowe's pliers, you undo that, and then once you have the wheel out, you might be able to get a tire on it. I'm not sure where you'd buy the tire, that is the question, but um, it should uh, put you in the right direction. Do you have a Shea locomotive? I cannot say I do. Hello from Minnesota. We're kind of neighbors. Yes, absolutely. New Haven and Skill, welcome. Do you have any layout tips? Not really other than uh, make it the way you want. You know, just uh, if, if there's something you want to put on your layout, even if it's not realistic, don't hesitate. You're building your layout for yourself. Have you ran a Dash 9 yet? No Dash 9s yet. I'll have to get some other stuff. I think the first thing is going to be a GG1. Probably the new one I bought. Casey Hudson, uh, could I take apart a motor on a River Rossi E8? I believe those are the ones that uh, River Rossi was making in about the 70s. Uh, you can, you open it up um, by lifting up the tabs on the sides. I'm not sure I'd recommend it, but um, yeah, it's, it's not impossible. Those uh, motors from the 70s and 80s by River Rossi, I find, are a little bit fickle. Um, the roller motors, in my opinion, are tougher, especially the ones that had actual ball bearings in them. Those things were top-notch. Rapid F Transit Fan 2010, do you remember me? Yeah. Uh, hello from New Hampshire, too. We got a lot of viewers in New Hampshire. That's cool. Any new repairs slash restorations since your last YouTube post? Hmm. Uh, well... Uh, some of you may remember that I was giving away a locomotive. I went to ship that out a few days ago, and uh, just before I did, I just wanted to check in on the running condition of it to make sure it was all in order. Because uh, if I'm sending something to somebody, I don't want to be shipping them a piece of garbage. Uh, so I put it on the track, and it's running fine, but the current draw is a little higher than I'd like. So I figure it probably needs new lubricants. So I open it up, and uh, lo and behold, the lubricants have dried out. So I cleaned those out. I... Uh, Took all, uh, there was a little bit of uh, dust and hair in it. I got that all out of it. 
put it back on the track. Sure enough, the current draw is gradually dropping. I just figure this thing just needs to be run around. So I leave it running down here. Uh, I go upstairs, make myself a coffee, and by the time I come back down here, uh, the thing is stopped and it's smoking. So uh, I don't know what went wrong with the motor. I'm suspecting the original owner damaged it somehow because the current draw was dropping, and then, uh, yeah, when I got down here, full short circuit and the motor completely shot. So uh, I unfortunately... Uh, have not fixed that yet, but uh, the person who, if you're watching this right now, uh, was supposed to get that locomotive, I'm happy to let you know that there is, in fact, a brand new Bachman speeder set coming your way. So, yeah, that's pretty much the only project. Uh, hey, SMT, I sent you an email about a few locomotives at my local hobby store you might be interested in. I'll have a look for that later. Hello from Montreal. Uh, any updates on the Hershey layout? Yes, uh, I have been working on that lately. Nothing too dramatic, but in the same trip to the hobby shop to buy the speeder set for the subscriber, I found a whole bunch of materials which were useful. So I've been trying to figure out how to make all the piping work. So yeah, I've started working on all the lines for the AC units. So it's just a little bit, but... I, I think the I think it looks really good, and uh, I also bought more material so I can finally finish this in the back. So it's uh, it's getting closer by the day. Hey everyone, it's been a while since I've been able to watch an SMT mainline live stream. We closed early at work today because of it being slow. Got any auto racks to run? I can't say I do. Anyway, I'm going to look for the conversion car. That way we can actually hook these up to the GG1, and then I think we'll run that. How would you deal with swapping cars for better quality cars? Um... Well, if you mean trading, I, I couldn't say, uh, but if you mean just adding on new wheels and stuff, you, most hobby shops carry uh, replacement trucks and things like that, or at least metal wheels. Can you run your GE AC6000? Yeah, we're going to run the GG1 first, though. SMT, have you ever heard of the Strasbourg Railroad? Yes, I have. Never been there, but uh, heard a lot about it. How are the repairs doing? Oh, I was just talking about uh, the engine I picked up at the train show not too long ago burning up, but other than that, they've been successful. So here it is, my brand new, to me, $20 GG1. I'm curious to see if this thing is even strong enough to pull this, but there's only one way to find out. Uh, SE, sorry I'm late to the party. You're never late on these live streams because I don't plan them. A coupler height looks a little questionable, but I'll just let it go anyway. <laughs> yeah, the wheels are slipping pretty bad, but it's doing it. Yeah, that's running mint. Maybe I spoke too soon. It's running fine. It might just be a little bit too much weight. Let's see if we can get traction just by slowing it down a little. Nope. Hello, uh, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Welcome.
Hey, SMT, can you estimate how many trains you've gotten in your lifetime? Uh, including ones that uh, I no longer have, like ones I've sold, I would guess over 500. I could be wrong, though. It might be less. All right, well, I guess we'll put the Australian locomotive on now. Uh, this thing did well in one direction, but not so much in the other. Uh, sounds like the GG1 is going to be another can we get this locomotive running again in a future video. Uh, I don't think it needs an entire overhaul. Probably just some uh, new lubricant. Like It's running pretty well. Let's have a quick look here. It doesn't look like this is one which had traction tires, so... And... Oh boy. Well, it's eight wheel drive. Would have been better if they had, you know, got all the six powered wheels actually, uh, made them actually powered, but uh, I guess not. All right, the Australian locomotive. Not this one, but uh, a slightly newer one. Uh, how do. Oh. Okay, hold on a moment. I just saw a comment fly by there. How did you set up your DC and DCC systems together? Uh, I forget what this is called, but it's a double pole switch, which means you have two wires coming in on both sides and then one out. So uh, one side is wired in, which goes to the DC controller. The other two wires come in from the DCC controller. They both meet up here, and then that gets sent uh, directly into the track. So... Uh, these don't interact at all, but you can uh, use them both on the same layout, which is nice. Because if you're like me and you have a whole bunch of old DC locomotives, running them on DCC is really not that great. You run a much higher chance of uh, overheating the motor. I'm at Cracker Barrel. That's a nice place to be. I've only been there once in my life, but it was awesome. I think this one actually has sound if you run it on DC. Maybe not. Oh, there it is. Uh, thanks for asking how to connect them both. I've been wondering how to do that. I did a video on it a while back. Not one of my better ones, but uh, it will show you how to uh, get it done. Is that a Broadway Limited locomotive? It sure is. It's one of their older models, though. Do you have any Amtrak Superliners? I can't say I do. Can you run Spaceball 1? I'll try to. I can't remember if I uh, fixed the bands on that engine or not, though. Let me have a look here. Yeah, unfortunately I can't run that one. SMT, what's your opinion on the best company to buy steam locomotives from in HO? Um, that's a good question. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. Um, Broadway Limited can be a good company. There are some people that really like them, but um, not 100% of people. There have been a few people who have reached out to me saying they've had a lot of problems with their Broadway Limited engines, but I'd say generally they're good. As for all the other manufacturers, I don't really think that there's a bad one. They're all very expensive, but um, the truth is these days, you know, they've got everything so refined that, you know, you're probably going to get a good product no matter who you go with except maybe Bachman, but even they've improved a lot. Broadway Limited is awful for reliability. Well, there you go. You do have a few people who uh, are not a big fan of them. I haven't had a lot of experience with their products, so I can't speak personally, but uh, that's just what I've heard. Hey, SMT, watch the movie Runaway Train again. Love your videos. That is an awesome movie. It's probably one of my favorites. 
I should probably uh, run the model of that later, actually. Can you run the big boy? Yeah, we'll uh, run it later, because that tends to be a very popular request. Also, the Canadian Pacific DD-40 is technically a DD-35A. This has been the biggest debate in the community, because years ago I bought uh, the exact same model, which is this thing, and there's a lot of people that say it is a DD-40, and then a lot of others who say it's a DD-35. I don't have a clue. I'm no expert on those sorts of things. All I know is that Athern did call it a DD-40, but maybe they were wrong. I don't know. Harrison, did you run the Conrail LSD-70 yet? If so, can you run it later on the live stream? Why not? Let's do it. Uh, SMT, what would be the favorite steam locomotive you've gotten? Uh, it would have to be my model of the uh, Wakefield train, which is a uh, Swedish E2 locomotive. Fantastic model. It uh, actually is by Bachmann, which is not one of my favorite manufacturers, but from a detail perspective, it's mint. They did such a nice job with it. Pricey engine, it uh, costs 600 Canadian dollars. Um, I've never bought an engine that expensive, and I likely never will again, but um, it was sort of sentimental because we used to actually have this train uh, in the Udaway and uh, used to go by my grandfather's house, so it's kind of special. Did you ever see the movie Runaway Train from 1973 about the Rio Grande Ski Train? I did see that. It was on YouTube for a little while years ago. Um, it seemed like a, a decent movie. Certainly not the best Runaway Train movie in my opinion, though. I wonder if the uh, code's already in for it. Yes, it is. Good. I like the mashup of uh, a GE AC6000 leading a passenger train. Yeah, not to mention a Canadian passenger train. That's an Australian locomotive. It's always just a big mix and match sort of thing here. Uh, did I spot a shark nose? It looked like the blue and white midnight special, yes. Got a few of those, actually. Uh, there's the Midnight Special. Also got a Pennsylvania one, Burlington Northern, Southern Pacific, Canadiana. I don't know if they ever made an American version of that one. Probably. Harrison, you need to do some more viewer mail vids. Absolutely. The uh, amount of parcels uh, that have arrived recently, I've got, uh, like, those are all things uh, I'm supposed to unbox. So there's going to be a lot of those on the way uh, quite shortly, I promise you. Hey, SMT, can you run the big boy? We'll run it later. Not just quite yet. Do you have tips for making a model railroad? I would say if you've never built a layout before, the best thing to do would be to get yourself a, a pad of paper and a pen and figure out what exactly you'll want to get out of it. And if you need to get inspiration, you know, you can get old model railroad or magazines. People will give those away to you. Like you can find them everywhere. Um, or you can go online and find stuff. Like get inspiration, figure out what it is you want and then uh, figure out how much space you have. The more space, the better, obviously. Um, but you know, sometimes you don't have a lot of space and you just gotta work with it, but you get creative and can make something really cool. And then just kind of edit based on, um, yeah, space and budget. And of course you can always add something on later. So if you want a big roundhouse on your layout, it's gonna cost $250 to put it on then put it on hold and make it a future expansion on your layout. But uh, yeah, more than anything, just have fun with it. Don't uh, limit yourself because there's a lot of people out there uh, with really good advice um, and they're more than happy to help. But there's also some people who will tell you that the first thing to do is figure out a location and a time and if you're running steam or diesel and stuff. And 
If you're really interested in the historic aspect of model railroading, fill your boots with that, but it's not for everyone. And uh, if you're not one of those people, uh, just forget it and uh, build what you want. How much money did you spend on your layout? Oh boy, I do not have a clue. I don't know if I'd uh, smile or cry if I saw the number. I don't know. There are memories in this thing that will last a lifetime, so whatever it is, it's worth it. Hey, SMT, do you have any AMTs from Montreal? Uh, I can't say I do. That would be nice to add to the layout, though. I was actually rail fanning some AMT stuff last time I was in uh, Montreal. Late last summer, I believe it was. I propose a project to make your homemade lighthouse and include it on the layout. It'd be interesting for revolving beacon. I rec recommend a microwave dish motor. Interesting idea. Yeah, one of my switches seems to be uh, causing some short circuits. So I guess we'll run something else now. I don't know what we should. Uh, Rick M. Hey, SMT, how's it going? What's your favorite piece of rolling stock in your collection? Favorite piece of rolling stock. Hmm. I feel like I should have an answer for this, but I nothing nothing comes to mind. You should check out Hiawatha Hobbies. Uh, are you still willing to give away the train master? If so, I'll take it. I already did a draw for that, and uh, somebody actually did win it. Uh, can you run your Canadian National Dash 9? Yeah, we can do that. Provided it actually has couplers. That I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. That looks a little broken. Yeah, I don't think that that one's going to work. This one might, though. Yeah, that should do it. Hey, SMT, what's your most expensive steam locomotive? Uh, the most expensive one I ever bought was uh, this one right here. That cost $600. Most expensive engine I ever bought. Uh, the second would be... Well, the first would actually be the Hiawatha because uh, those things will go on eBay for a, a fair dime, but uh, it was my grandmother's, so I didn't pay anything for it. But uh, I've, I've never seen one actually sell for this price, but you, I have seen them on eBay for about three grand, which is just ridiculous. This one's not worth three grand because it's missing parts, but uh, they can go for a very pretty penny. The AMTs are kind of hard to find, but I have good news from Montreal. There are SC44 chargers coming to Montreal. Oh, that's cool. Do you still have the Yellowstone? Yep, haven't done anything with it yet, but uh, it's still a project which I intend to carry out. Hey, SMT, what is a good incline for a Walters mainline CNGE ES44DC on a 4x8 layout? Good incline. I don't know what kind of grades those things could handle. Um, yeah, I'm certainly not an expert on grades. Like when I built this layout, I actually just experimented to see kind of what the steepest grade I could get out of an average locomotive. But um, I, I think any professional model railroader will probably tell you the milder the grade, the better. Take that what you will. I know that Woodland Scenic sells pre-made grades, which are really good, because obviously you actually know what you're getting into, so you could just go buy one of those kits and uh, get the mildest one they have. No more than 3%. 3% over what distance, though? That's the question. Dave, Z to G scale, I'm out to dinner. Have a good live stream. Thanks for stopping by. Can you run one of your Alco Pennsylvania locomotives? 
Um, yeah, I think I think I have one, which is an Alco, the Lackawanna Railroad one. Okay, and you run a steam locomotive next. We'll run the uh, the Lackawanna engine first, but yeah, we can we can definitely run a steam engine. Maybe something like the 210 too. But if somebody has a request other than the big boy, then we can definitely run that. Nothing against the big boy. I just want to run it later. Uh, yeah, where's that Lackawanna engine at? Now, I bet it's probably right in front of me and I'm just not even seeing it. Hmm. I don't recall putting it on this shelf. Oh, yeah, it is right in front of me. It's right here. Apparently, uh, David Z to G scale who's in here said he's going to wait. He actually uh, sent this locomotive in. Quick shout out. A cab forward. That's a cool choice. We can probably run that. First time, I think I've run it through the S-curve. Not sure how well it's going to handle it, but uh, I'll try. What a beauty. It's probably still programmed with three. It's weird how when the mute light goes on, the sound starts. Is that a Century 420? I don't think it is. How's it going, me, Dom, and the family? Finally made a live stream. It's been a bit. Oh, pretty well. How have you been? 3% uh, grade is 3 out of 100. Okay. So I guess the measurement is just 3% of whatever it is you're working with. So 3% of one foot, let's say. Could you run the Canadian Pacific 464? 464. 464. I don't know which engine that is. SMT, have you ever thought of switching to an NC power cab? I'm pretty happy with this thing. It served me well, um, and I don't use DCC a whole lot, so I don't really plan on that, but uh, I don't know. That's one of those uh, great debates in the community. Digitrax or NC? I think he means the Royal Hudson. Yeah, maybe. That's a pretty good puller. Can you run NKP779? I don't believe I own that engine. So realistic. You run the Southern Pacific 4449. Neither of those engines work terribly well, unfortunately. I still have to fix up the Freedom Train, and the Southern Pacific one is really messed up because the wheels somehow developed a quartering issue. Of 
4449 is the daylight. Yeah. Yeah, I was referring to uh, that engine right there. But the wheels, the, I, they got a quartering issue after I was doing some work on it. All right, well, I think we'll put on the cab forward now. Can't tell if this thing is rolling along to come to a stop or if something's not working right with my controller. Yeah, that's funny. I wonder if I set the brake if it will stop. Nope. Hmm, that is a very weird issue. Well, I guess we'll just wait for it to roll back around here, and then I'll just take it off manually. I'm pretty sure it was responding to three earlier, so I don't know what exactly changed there, but uh, that's fine, I guess. We got a literal runaway train. Yeah, absolutely. I haven't seen this happen before. I think it is slowing down a little bit. The PTC system failed. My GG1 is not working. Got any tips? Uh, if I might be able to help you if I get a bit more detail on it, uh, such as the manufacturer. Uh, but... You know, the, the big thing, put it on the track and, and see what it does. If uh, you got sparks coming from the wheels and the engine's not running, you've probably got a short circuit. If you've got humming from the motor but the engine's not running, then that likely means that the drive is jammed or the motor is fried. If you have um, a light on but no sound from the motor, probably have an electrical issue with the motor, which usually is the brushes or a wire going to the motor. And if you have nothing at all, it's probably a pickup issue where uh, no power is getting into the engine. That can be a broken wire or really rusty wheels, things like that. So, yeah, just uh, investigate it a little bit. My only advice is when you're testing an engine, don't leave it on the track with full power for more than a few seconds while you test it. Because if the motor is getting power and you're giving it full power and it's not able to move, you're going to burn it out very, very quickly if you're not careful. Those are two big boys. This is what I'm looking for. I fried an N-scale locomotive today. I bought it in an antique store. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. That's uh, one thing whenever you buy a used locomotive is I highly recommend opening it up and servicing the whole drive. Because I find, especially if an engine's been uh, sitting for a while, you know, try to make it go again. It might run, but the motor could be under a lot of strain due to dry lubricant. Hey, SMT Mainline, I found a locomotive lot on eBay that had a Norfolk Southern, a Canadian Pacific engine, and an AWVR custom locomotive that was kit bashed, and I have, and it has DCC sound. Sounds like quite the lot. Wow. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I wonder if I just grabbed a big boy tender if I could still uh, hook it up to the rest of the train. I know there are probably some uh, Southern Pacific fans which are not very happy about this, but uh, it's the only way I can actually haul some cars with this thing.
<laughs> yeah, they... Coupling height's definitely not on par, but yeah, I'll just try to go with that. Oh, that's nice. The engine doesn't even start. It's probably this tender, because the wheels could pick up power from uh, a different side. So we'll just do one lap with this engine, leave the cars on the track. Can I see the Hershey factory? Yeah. There she is. I was talking earlier in the live stream about how I started uh, working on all the uh, piping for the AC units. Yep, that's definitely the problem. Well, apparently it can handle that fine. Big boys tenders, I don't think pick up power. I'm pretty sure they do. So there's that. Have any CSX units? Yeah. Uh, I think it's a dash eight. Does the cabboards tender not have a coupling? It does, but I think it's a, f I think it's a four in one of some kind. And I also think it's missing parts. I'm not really sure what we should run next. Got any Amtrak rolling stock. No uh, Amtrak passenger cars. I do have a few Amtrak engines, though. Hey, SMT, I've been trying to find a good track for an F59 PHI I got recently. Any suggestions? Um, Cato Unitrack. I've heard great things about, although it is very expensive. Of course, there's always the classic Atlas Snap Track. Bachman Easy Track is okay. I don't find it's the greatest, but it will get the job done. Whatever you go with, though, I'd recommend getting uh, Nickel Silver and uh, Code 100. Run the Blue Goose. I don't think that engine runs right now. Have you gone to New York? Many, many times, yeah. I've been to New York State probably every year of my life. Uh, been to New York City once. Beautiful place. River Rossi GG1. We already ran that one. Greetings from Ottawa, Ontario. Oh, I got somebody from around here. Welcome. It's not responding to the controller. Maybe you can take it out. It's... My best loco beside the CSX that I have the Amtrak cars and loco too. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what the problem with that engine would be. Run the Australian AC6000. I think we already ran that one as well. Or a Santa Fe locomotive. An SD70. I did, somebody requested the Hudson, I think. Yeah, we'll run that for now. Hi, from Montreal, welcome. Hello from Alberta. Welcome. I 
Right, what row number is she? Uh, 2020. It's not the royal one, I believe. For, I think the, the one which pulled the royal train was 2850, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, my father is a member at the local club. He has a railroad that goes between three rooms via tunnels. Wow. Greetings from Massachusetts. Can you run the River Rossi Dreyfus if you have it? Yes. Yeah, we can definitely run that. In fact, we might just run the whole train. Uh, hey, SMT, if you were to kitbash another train from a movie, what would it be? Most likely uh, the AWVR 777, along with 776, I believe it is, uh, from the movie Unstoppable. Hello from Melbourne, home of the V-Line B-Class. You should do an updated version of the GoPro on a model train around the layout. That would not be a bad idea, because a lot has certainly changed. Last weekend, I saw a come from away, which is a story about passengers who got stuck in Newfoundland during September. Yeah, I've heard about that. AWVR triple seven and seven six seven are kind of overrated. I guess I can see how you might think that. I mean, it's a bit of a ridiculous movie, but I still love it. I'm turning my whole bedroom into an N scale layout. I hope to have a Southern Pacific daylight in N scale soon. That sounds like fun. I guess I'll start getting all the stuff down to run the whole Dreyfus. Do you have a drive shaft for a GP18? Well, it depends on who it's made by. If it's an Atherin, I might. Can I send you stuff for repairs? I'm in Florida. I no longer uh, do repairs which involve shipping just because uh, I was having quite a few problems with that. If uh, somebody's local, I might do a repair for them. But uh, yeah, shipping's a, a challenge, especially when stuff gets lost and things like that. What's your locomotive to rolling stock ratio? I'm pretty confident at this point there are probably more engines than rolling stock and... Uh, I know uh, some model railroaders might think that that's wrong, but uh, I like it that way. I need to figure out where exactly... Okay, I found the Dreyfus's rolling stock. Uh-oh. Quick question. I got a project using a Bachman E33 frame. What chassis, what chassis would you suggest? I'm not sure what a E33 is, unfortunately, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure what I'd do in that case. Do you have a drive shaft for a lifelike GP18? I don't have a spare for that. If it's uh, a lifelike, though, that probably means it's a proto, because um, like starter set lifelike engines don't have drive shafts. They're just uh, they just have motors and gears. But um, yeah, a proto probably would. So look for proto parts with similar sized locomotives, because the parts are probably cross compatible. Do you know how to fix a snapped headlight wire? Just uh, 
strip the ends of the wires, tie them together, and throw some solder and electrical tape on there, and uh, you'll be in business. I think this one's the first car. Hey, SMT, I've seen a switch that keeps derailing my train. I switched the switches around, but the train keeps derailing. What do you suggest? Um, I guess my question would be, do all your trains derail? Because sometimes the problem is not with the switch, it's with the locomotive. Uh, if, if other trains go over it just fine, it's probably a problem with the locomotive, in which case you'd likely want to check out uh, the trucks, because sometimes something goes wrong. Like you have a wire which gets somewhere where it can't be and it actually prevents the truck from rotating from side to side or up and down. Like they should be pretty mobile. So if that's the issue, that's probably why it's derailing. I've seen quite a few instances where somebody's you know, started tearing up all their track to try to fix a problem and it doesn't do anything and it turns out the problem is not with their tracks, it's just with the engine. Are you going to June 4th? Um, I really don't know. I would probably say likely not just because of how long the drive is, but I'm not certain on that. Where's your Berkshire 7079? So I think up on that shelf, that engine lost a screw though, so the drivers are loose, so it hasn't run in a while. Do you have the Bachman Hogwarts Express? Can't say I do. I had an opportunity to buy one at a train show, but the guy wanted, in my opinion, uh, too much money for it. I think they made those I guess Bachman must have been making those in the 2000s, because I think the first Harry Potter movie came out in 2001. So if that's true, it had to have been built sometime after that, but Bachman was still in a bit of a questionable quality stage, so I'm not not sure if I, how much I'd want that. If I bought one, it would have to be going for a pretty good price. Run an F40PH. I can probably one run one of those later. Faulty coupling, maybe. So I have the Spirit of 76 C liner set. So they do have one, that's good to know. 
have to keep my eyes out. I'd love to uh, own one of those. My GG1 is by AHM. Have you repaired this GG1? I've, I haven't worked on one of those before. I do own one, though. Are you getting a new screw for 7079? If I can find the parts, yeah. That's always the challenge. River Rossi parts might be cross compatible though, so if I find a donor locomotive, I might just steal parts off it and do that. Hello, I'm 50 minutes late, but that's fine. Never late on the SMT show. Bought it for 15 bucks, that's a pretty good deal. I've got the Canadian National Dash 9 2521 that you ran. I got it at a train show. Okay, but the tender's wrong. The tender's wrong on this? What locomotives do you run off camera the most? Probably the Wakefield train. Which uh, is, is this thing right here. Well, it is good looking. Wish mine was that big. Thank you. Love the Hudson engines. Yeah, they're pretty sharp. They did such a good job, the design of this one. It's been such a time when these uh, ruled the rails. I wish the Hiawatha had lived into uh, preservation. That would be a real thing to see. Randall Elson. Hey, Harrison. Uh, listening in a while. Drove back from Spring Springfield, Missouri. Well, thanks for joining in. I have Go Engines also from the 1980s. It's sad that the real, that in the real world, the single Hudson has not been saved from scrapping. Hey, some tea. I went to my first Indy 500. It's a big event around here because I live in Indiana. SMT, you're ignoring me. I don't ignore anybody's comments unless they're inappropriate, but... Uh, there is an organization system which uh, I don't have control over. So if your comments are getting missed, uh, I'm sorry about that, but I promise you it's not intentional. You should get an NC power controller. Somebody was suggesting that earlier. I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty happy with my... Uh, Digitrax controller, but I'm sure the DCS controllers are pretty good, too I just don't really have the need to get a better DCC controller because this thing does everything. I like just fine Do you like Canadian National or Canadian Pacific? I like them both personally. I prefer Canadian Nationals paint scheme, but uh Hey, Pacific Rocks, too. They're both uh, great railroads, in my opinion. DCS is not DCC. DC DCS makes DCC controllers. It's possible they also make uh, DC controllers, but... Um, Oh, I know a lot of people. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the big clash. I see everybody about it in the community arguing. It's like, ah, oh, you know, NCS, they make crop controllers. And, you know, the, the power cab people come out and they're like, ah, oh, Digitrax, don't buy that junk and stuff. And so it goes on. 
There's also Bachman controllers, which uh, they, you know, just released the new uh, Easy Command system. I don't find you hear too much about those. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. DCS is a proprietary system by MTH. We don't think of any N NCE. It is NCE. Hey, SMT, I haven't been on your live stream in a while. How's it been? Not bad. Canadian National's my favorite. It's not a bad railroad. Bachman has some good trains for cheap. Some people like them, and that's fine. If you can find them cheap enough, uh, yeah, they can be all right. But uh, I personally don't find they're such a good deal anymore. You need more Rock Island units. I agree. They're, uh, they got a good paint scheme. What's the cheapest locomotive you own? Um, I'm not entirely sure. I've picked up some engines for like $2. The best deal I think I got though was this thing, which uh, I bought this for $3 and it ran practically perfect right away. All I had to do was clean the wheels on it and it was already running before that. It's not a fantastic engine. I can kind of see why it was going so cheap. It's, uh, it's a little junky, but I like it. Do you have an SD40-2 in your fleet? I've got a couple of those. Got a Grand Trunk, Canadian Pacific, Southern Pacific, uh, Canadian National. I think I've got a few others, but they're in a different part of the shelf. What would you say is your worst uh, test slash mess up, such as a locomotive sparking or smoking? Um, I don't know. I've had a few fail pretty bad. I had a Tyco Conrail engine, and the motor was having some sort of a problem. And lo and behold, one day it just uh, burned right up. I got it on film too. If you watch running all my F units, it's one of my older videos. You can actually see that happen. But uh, yeah, it, it, it burned out pretty bad. There was a lot of smoke coming out of it. That, that happens every so often. Can you run the GS4 Freedom Train? I oh, can try to. Do you like old muscle cars? I love old muscle cars. My grandfather uh, back in the day had a uh, 1971 Dodge Charger. I never saw it, but I've seen pictures of it. Beautiful machine. Hey, SMT, what happened to the Chesapeake on fire locomotive? It's still around, although last time I was running it, the current draw was high again, so my guess is that it has a shorted coil, and uh, I'm going to have to end up replacing the motor at some point, because sooner or later it's just going to burn out entirely, and then that's going to be the end of that motor. Not the end of that engine. Um, parts are not, they're expensive, but they're not impossible to come behind, so uh, you, you, can, you can find them on eBay and stuff like that pretty cheap. But shipping is where the prices go up. Uh, where is the Freedom Train? It's right here. If I send you a train, uh, could you fix it and send it back? I don't do repairs, which involve shipping anymore, because I was having a lot of issues with that. Is the Southern Green Tender engine fixed? Southern. 
the British engine? I haven't worked on that yet. It's going to be uh, exciting, though, because it looks like it's in terrible condition. Now, I think this thing is probably going to derail, but we're going to try to run it anyways. I bought this thing in some sort of a warehouse deal. I forget what the end price was because I actually ended up getting a refund because uh, the folks at Amazon told me it was in perfect condition, but as you can see, it's not. So I yeah, I was able to get some money knocked off it, but it's never been a great runner. I saw that vid. Yeah, it's probably almost a year ago now. Remember the CNF unit that smoked and burned out when you repaired it? I did that to a Bachman engine I picked up for $1. Put an Atherin Genesis chassis and motor in it. runs so much better now. Yeah, I mean, that thing was not in good shape, and the motor I put in there was so questionable. So it's not really surprising that that's what ended up happening to it, but uh, I ended up putting one of those eBay motors in it, and yeah, that fixed it right up. You're in the Quebec and Gatineau locomotive. Well, you don't see that requested every day, sure. What's the most detailed locomotive you have? Probably this one right here. Okay, it's pretty kitted out. Look at this, it's real derailed. It's probably gonna come right off around there. You see that wheel? It's The front wheel is like right off the track. Do you have any Stratzberg engines? I cannot say I do. What do you think of the price of fuel? It's almost not worth thinking about. <laughs> Every time you fill up, it's just like, oh my goodness. Well, there goes another hundred dollars. All right, so there's the American Freedom Train. Next up is the uh, Gatineau and Quebec City locomotive. Whoops. Just uh, bumped that over. This is a division of Genesee and uh, Wyoming Railroad. Really good paint scheme in my opinion.
Do you have any Proto 2000 stuff? I've got a fair bit of Proto 2000. It's pretty nice quality in my opinion, and you can find it going uh, fairly cheap sometimes at train shows. The older ones have problems with um, the uh, gears splitting, unfortunately. They've got nylon gears, so that's not so good, but um, they're, they're basically Atherm Blue Box clones, and the Atherm Blue Box engines are just about indestructible, so other than the gear issues, they're, they're pretty high-quality engines, at least mechanically. You should hook yourself up with a Cato Amtrak engine. It was one of the best big purchases on a model train I've ever made so far. Super detailed and runs smooth, so clean. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about Cato. I don't have a crazy amount of their stuff, but um, they seem to be pretty diligent on, uh, on quality. How about this for being in the right place at the right time? I was looking around my local Goodwill and found a Bachman Owen 30 Northern Lights uh, train set in a box for $18. What a good deal. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, sometimes. Another blue box is the Nokia 3310. Yeah, those things are like practically indestructible. The only common problem I see on them is sometimes the mounts for the motors uh, end up cracking, and then the motor doesn't make contact with the metal under it, which is important because that's how it gets power. But, you know, you glue the motor back in or you replace the motor mounts, and uh, it's back up and running. You know, there have been times, too, where uh, I've dropped a blue box engine on the ground and... Yeah, maybe the motor pops out, but other than that, everything else is in fine shape. Peter Wacko, it's me now. I went to the Union Pacific Yard and I got the 1111 locomotive. I'm getting loaded on the videos. How many boxcars can an HO engine pull, do you think? I always wondered. Depends on uh, the size of the locomotive, how heavy it is, if it's all-wheel drive. A really good one can pull over 50 cars. A, a lower-quality one is probably more like 20 cars at the max. Yo, SMT, have you ever had a problem with wheels locking up? Because I have a chassis system F9 I fixed because I moved the wheels and it immediately ran. I don't know what would cause that problem, but yeah, sometimes things jam. Hey, SMT, can you run an Ontario Northland locomotive? Sure. Sparky, welcome to the live stream. How are you doing this evening? Do you have a HO scale pair marquette? I don't believe I do. Do you have any video game consoles? Uh, the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> That's it. I was generally a, a PC gamer. Yeah, for an Ontario Northland engine, I believe we've got one right here. SMT Mainline, are you going to the OVR trains next week? I really wish I could, but I think with the length of the drive, I, I probably won't. I'm not 100% certain on that, but it's quite the commitment. Do you have any main central locomotives? I think I've got a couple of them, yeah. Do 
I got a few uh, shots of this thing going by. Why do all the steam locomotives you have run really badly? Uh, it's not entirely true. Uh, I've got a few which run great, but uh, steam locomotives are very sensitive things. You got a lot of moving parts on them. And a lot of the ones I happen to own are a lot older, so the likelihood of something going wrong is just a little bit higher. But uh, that's fine with me. Uh, yeah, I think we'll run the lifelike engines. I thought I, yeah, here it is. SMT, how many of your buildings are illuminated? Can we see a night shot of the layout? Probably about 10. Uh oh. Something is not right with this switch. I, I don't know what, but everything seems to keep getting stuck here. What's the favorite building on the layout? Hershey's of Smith Falls. This engine uh, only has four wheel contact, so going over these switches with unpowered frogs tend to uh, give it issues. Hey, SMT, I haven't checked up in a while. What's the situation with the layout extension currently? I did a video on it recently. That's uh, about it so far. Things have been uh, pretty busy. loco drifted yeah i don't know there's something not quite right with that switch the frog when it came out of the factory like when i very first took it out of the box wasn't quite quite right and when i tried to fix it up it was having some issues do you know what your current layout footprint is i can't say i know anyway i'm not really sure what we should run next but uh, if anybody has any suggestions feel free to put them in the chat Things always go wrong when others are watching. Yeah, sometimes. Is your railroad Canadian Pacific or Canadian National? Uh, neither or. I run both. Canadian Centennial, please. Yeah, we can run that. The orange Australian locomotive. Yeah, that sounds good. We'll run that next. I 
Oh, this one doesn't even have a coupler. We'll run it for one lap, and then we'll put the Australian locomotive uh, in front of this thing. SMT still think of buying locomotives for parts? I never really buy an engine specifically for parts, but, you know, sometimes you get one where uh, it's already so parted out, trying to turn it back into a working model would be quite a challenge. So, yeah, I've uh, parted out a few of them. It's pretty rare, though. Anyways, that seems to work now. Let's get the Australian engine. part it out and sell them yeah i saw your comment about that a couple of days ago um i have had that question before is like you know can you just part engines out put all the parts on ebay and actually turn a profit you could easily make some money doing that because people you know are looking for parts but i don't know the amount of time to take a locomotive apart put every single you know piece on ebay and then wait for people to sell it I think that would probably not be worth your time. Can you run the BNSF engine before the end of the live stream? Yeah, I don't see why not. Hey, SMT, are you planning to install uh, working railroad crossings on your layout? Maybe so. I had one years ago, though, and uh, I never got it to work quite right. Do you have the Pennsylvania F3 made by Model Power? I don't believe I do. Do you have any Southern Pacific cab forwards? If so, could we see them run for a while? We already ran that earlier, so... I think we'll run something else. Run the 1985 runaway train. Sure, we'll run the uh, BNSF locomotive first, but uh, yeah, we can run that next. SMT, would you rather have $30 million or 30 million loyal friends and why? Interesting question. I don't really know how you could hang out with 30 million people because I think trying to hang out with 30 million people at the same time would be like impossible and, and the same would go with having 30 million people you know, trying to hang out with 30 million people individually. So, 
you know, would 30 million loyal friends be a nice thing in your life? Yeah, probably, but I don't think it would work very well. Can you run the 1985 Runaway Train? Yeah, yeah, I, I will. I'm just going to run uh, this thing first as well as the BNSF locomotive. Are you going to make a restoration on the N-Scale layout soon? I have a lot of engines that are ready to get restored. I had one engine where uh, I actually did start shooting a video, though, and uh, I, I put it on the track. I, like, I bought it from the store. They said it didn't run whatsoever, and the thing ran perfectly, so I didn't end up finishing the video because it's, like, it's not really a repair if there's nothing to get fixed. Like, everything was in check, so I don't know what happened when the store tested it, but... Clearly, it was in much better order than they thought. SMT can't see all your comments, so you yell at them. Yeah, if there's people uh, saying I'm ignoring them, uh, I mentioned this earlier, I never intentionally ignore anybody's comments, but the truth is that comments are organized by YouTube, and uh, that's not something that I control. So, uh, yeah, don't take it personally. The only comments I do ignore is, you know, if somebody's posting something, like, inappropriate in the chat, then uh, I'm not going to read that, but other than that, yeah, I'll read anybody's comment. How many scales do you have? I've got uh, three scales. N scale, HO, and O scale. With 30 million loyal friends, you can ask them to give you $5 each and boom, $150 million. <laughs> I don't know. Seems like a bit of an odd way uh, to go about getting $150 million. It's like you have to ask every single one of them. Hey, bud, can I have $5? Hey, can I have $5? I don't know. Phoenix Railroad Studios, welcome to the live stream. That's my sister begging for money. <laughs> Sandra Nicole, welcome to the live stream. What kind of invention would you come up with to make HO, uh, HO skill trains better? Uh, I don't know if there's really a specific invention you could come up with to make them better. There's certainly... Uh, Design flaws. I find the way gears are fitted around uh, axles has not been something that any manufacturer has entirely perfected because eventually the adhesives or you know how they're fit on fail and the wheels become loose. But um, I mean, the, the truth is, most modern manufacturers make very good products anyway. They're super expensive. That's really their only drawback now. Anyway, I'm going to remove all this, and we're going to run the 1985 runaway train. I haven't taken that one out in a while. I don't really know where I should put all these cars, but I'll figure it out.
Have you seen the low-hanging railroad bridge on YouTube that opens up all oversized vehicles that try to fit underneath? Yeah, I think it was uh, named the can opener. Or the 11-foot-8 bridge or something like that. But yeah, there's compilations that date back to like 2008 of uh, people driving rental trucks and stuff under that bridge. And then it peels the top right off the truck. What a mess. They tried to raise the bridge recently, and I don't even think that that fixed it. And as far as I know, it's still uh, still pulling the roofs of trucks right off. All oh, right, I can't seem to find the locomotive. Hmm. Hi, SMT. I really enjoyed watching the repair of the Athern uh, DD40 Canadian Pacific Rail Paint to Diesel Locomotives. It's clever how you installed that log stem rod inside. Yeah, oh, that went surprisingly well. I didn't think it was really uh, going to work that great, but it didn't turn out too bad. Are you planning to buy a Reputo FP49 for the GO train? If they weren't so expensive, I'd buy one in a heartbeat. I mean, they're great looking models, but uh, yeah, I think the cheapest ones are over 250 Canadian dollars. So not a small amount. Might be higher, I don't know. Use an SD40-2 next to it. Make my day. I don't see why not. The F unit uh, seems to have lost its front coupler, and now that's not working properly either. I'm going to have to make a list at some point of all the things down here that need repairs. Come right off the track again. All right, I think that's enough. The 85 uh, runaway train will put on an SD40-2 because that seems to be what everybody would like. Repeater's quality is not what it once was. I don't know if maybe they're having uh, supply chain issues because last time I was talking to uh, somebody who owns a train store, he was saying that all the manufacturers are having uh, major problems right now. So you know, I'd wonder if that's Rapido having a problem or just you know the model railroading industry in general having an issue. Front truck of the F unit has an issue too. The front truck is fine. It just is getting derailed because it doesn't have a front coupler. So the coupler of the engine in front of it is actually lifting the engine up off the track, and that's why the truck's turning all funny. Now an SD forty two. I'm kind of thinking that uh, we should run this one because I haven't run that in all quite a long time. What's the official size of the layout? I've come up with uh, 4 by 8 by 3. 4 by 8 by 3. If, if 3 is the height, then yeah, it sounds a, about right. Um, but this layout's a 4 by 8. That one's a 4 by about 6. 
but there's also this bridge in the middle, so all in all, it's pretty close to being a 4x8 as well. I don't have a clue what any of that is, though. I haven't done any measurements on it. Oh, well, it looks like we got a super chat from uh, Gregory Novick. Uh, hey, love the videos. I think you'll just model your favorite libraries or a bit of everything. What's the best way to contact about sending you items you may like? Uh, if you want to send an email, you can contact uh, scrumptiousmodeltrains at uh, gmail.com. Thank you so much for the super chat. Now, uh, I think we'll try to get some freight cars for this thing. So there's two super chats now. Luke Mallet. Oh, thanks for sending in the super chats, folks. The Canadian stripe is uh, cool. Yeah, the zebra striped uh, CN engines are awesome. I mean, Canadian National has a pretty cool paint scheme still, but I uh, I preferred the older ones. Same goes with Canadian Pacific, too, I mean. Canadian Pacific used to have the, the old Pac-Man-style paint scheme, and, and that was pretty awesome. You should make another movie of a model train like Unstoppable. If I ever buy the models, I probably will. It was a lot of fun creating all the uh, videos based around uh, Runaway Train. Especially the one out in the snow. Hey, SMT, what's the history about the Canadian Pacific Royal Hudson? They pulled the Royal Train in uh, 1939 across Canada. I think that's about all I know about it. I mean, another piece of trivia about 2850 is that when uh, Hershey's opened their factory in Smith Falls, since the railroad was actually serving that factory, they had a huge um, display at the reception when they uh, had the big opening gala, and in the back they had it actually parked there as just part of the celebrations, which was pretty cool. I don't think they would do something like that today. SMT, will you please answer my question? Um, do we get into my... Okay, I see your comment, but I don't see your question. Hey, SMT, sorry if I was answering this wrong. I was gone for 15 minutes. Do you own any heritage units? Also, I've seen the GTW, AG, and E, BC Rail, and Wisconsin heritage units on the Canadian National Line. Uh, no, I do not own any models of the heritage units. I've seen a couple of them. One of them uh, was actually in New York City. It was the New Haven model. I don't know what type of engine that is, but it looks very similar to um, a P-42. SMT, do you have an eBay store? When you sell models, where are you listing them? Uh, I don't have an eBay store. Most of the times when I'm uh, selling off locomotives, I just haul them down to my uh, local hobby shop and uh, list them off there. Not a terribly uh, profitable thing because, uh, you know, the hobby shops, they don't want to pay a whole lot for them. But in most cases, I'm really just trying to get rid of them. They're just pieces that I don't need anymore and, you know, would be better off in someone else's hands. So that's all right. If I wanted to put them on eBay, I could definitely get a lot more money, but then you got to go through the hassle of actually shipping them and everything and dealing with customers on eBay. I'd imagine it's a bit of a nightmare sometimes, so I'd rather just sell them off to a good uh, story of trust there and not have to worry about any of that. Hmm. There we go. Hey, 
How's the Swedish locomotive doing? Quite well. Actually, I uh, bought a decoder for it a couple months ago. It's still running great. Jack, Jack, what have you done to the layout? Added uh, all of this on. I think I'm going to redo it, though. I'm not a huge fan of this curve. Ever watched The X-Files? I've seen episodes of it. To be completely honest, it was never my favorite show. There are a few episodes that were interesting, though. I remember there was one where they had some sort of a secret laboratory, and it was actually set up in a bud car. I, I thought that that was really cool. I don't like the S-curve either, I'd redo it. Yeah, I don't know. I have to figure out some sort of a way to connect this section of track up to the rest of the layout. A lot of people were saying that what would be a lot smarter is if, you know, I just uh, had this track right here link up there. But the problem is that I've got this switch right here and trying to reroute this track would be a nightmare. So that's issue number one. Uh, the second issue is I would have to remove this bridge and that bridge or disconnect them because trying to run all my trains into that yard through these three switches would undoubtedly cause a lot of derailment. So that option is kind of off the table. But I have been uh, experimenting around with this track right here and I think I can change the angle of this so it will be a little bit less sharp, which should cause well, a whole lot less derailments in this section. And then uh, for this curve, what I'm thinking is that I pull the curve back a little bit. So the curve, both these curves will start earlier. But that, what that will do is it will give me a little bit more space at the edge of the layout. So I can put a switch here and I can just run another track off the main line around here. So there's going to be another curve added. But the benefit is that there's no more switch on the corner, which in my experience always caused problems. So that's how I plan to get around all this. It's a very complicated way of going about things, but uh, I think it's going to look nice. Uh, just change the radius, adjust to a 24. Well, I'm going up, this is an 18 radius curve right here. I'm going up to 22s, which is what I already have on most of the main line. So once I have that in place, I think it's going to resolve a lot of the derailments. It already works well with, with small trains. It's just larger pieces of equipment that uh, don't like that sharp corner. Do you have any great northern engines? I only have one. It's in pieces right now, but I still intend to put that all back together. 18, yikes. I mean, it could be worse. It could be 15s, which some people actually have, but uh, yeah, it's not, not brilliant. Well, I'm not sure what we should run right now. Maybe uh, one of the big boy locomotives. What does everybody want? Do you have any CSX engines? I have two of them, yeah. I have a bunch of 15s, lol. I mean, sometimes you have to use 15 radius curves. It's actually what I have uh, on this line right here for a really short section and a few other places on the layout. I mean, they work with small engines. It's just that, uh, you know, you're a lot more likely to run into problems. Would you ever create a second channel for expertise or hobbies, maybe blogging? Yeah, I've thought about making some other YouTube channels, um, but the truth is I don't know as much about other things as model railroading. Like, I really like boats, but 
those are something that I'm still learning about versus model railroading was something I'd already been into for like 10 years. So I already had a bit of experience to start off with, which was certainly helpful. But uh, yeah, it's not off the table. Canadian Pacific Royal Hudson. We already ran that one. Did you run a GP9? Yeah, why not? Got one there. I think these are all uh, all Jeep nines. Somebody wanted me to run a double headed train earlier. If both these have couplers, we'll run them together. All right then. Have you used static grass before? Can't say I have. It looks really nice. It's something I definitely am willing to try, but yeah, for now I've just been going with the classic woodland scenic stuff. BSP daylight's broken still, I think. Yeah, that is the case. Huh, that doesn't run bad. I think they're GP18s. I'm building my first layout, what kind of scenery would you suggest? I mean, hey, it's as far as your imagination goes. If you want to make something that's really going to stand out, you might want to consider making something uh, which takes place in a month of fall because then you get to put all the colorful trees on the layout and that can look really nice. So that's an idea. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it's whatever you want. Personally, a lot of the stuff on this layout is actually based off of things in my actual life. So every, every, every section of the layout in some way or another represents something. But of course you can just do whatever you want. This is great because these two cheap engines are trying to shut down on the switches because they don't run very well, but since there's two of them, they keep each other running. Maybe the numbers for efficiency are uh, not so good, but hey, it works. What would you suggest to a beginner like me? Figure out what it is you want in the hobby and then aim for it. Because, uh, again, I've, I've, I'm probably beginning to sound like a broken record saying this, but, you know, there's a lot of people that say you need to pick a time and a location and stuff that your railroad's based around and pick steam or diesel. Etc. 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 And if you're really interested in creating something historic, you know you can fill your boots with that. But you know, otherwise, I would just buy whatever whatever it is you think looks interesting. You know, if there's a train set that you think I, I like the way that looks. You know, buy it. Um, you know, don't hold yourself back or uh, limit yourself by you know putting in these rules because you know there are some people out there. Um, who are more prototypical and they'll they'll see something they like like let's say a, a european train of some sort like a tgv they want a tgv but i model a canadian layout and they will not buy that tgv because it's unrealistic and um it's like why would you limit yourself you know if you want to have a tgv buy a tgv it's uh 
The whole point of being in the hobby is enjoying it, and if you're enjoying it, you're doing it right, no matter how you do it. I think the other piece of advice I'd probably give to beginners too is don't ever get discouraged if things don't work out right, because, you know, you're not gonna begin an expert. That's just something that, you know, it's like no, nobody, nobody starts perfect. You know, I've been in the hobby for over 15 years now and I still wouldn't consider myself like a complete expert on it. And, uh, you know, it takes a lot of time to figure out how to make everything kind of work. But um, if things don't work out the first time, that's totally normal. I agree with no limits. I live in Japan, so most of my buildings are Japanese, but I mostly run Conrail. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, just get what it is you want. So, I mean, this layout is kind of an example. Realistically, this layout is horrible. I mean, you know, it's not prototypical to have a track which goes through a mountain for no reason. You know, if you're building a realistic railroad, you wouldn't build something like this. You know, a real railroad would want to avoid going through the mountain, they'd go alongside it because it wouldn't be economical to, to build something like this. And, you know, if you look at the types of equipment I'm running, like, it's just a whole mix of different things. So realism-wise, this is a very bad layout. But uh, just for something to, uh, you know, mess around with, it's a lot of fun. And uh, like I said, the whole point of being in a hobby is to enjoy it. So, you know, there's... Uh, there's the people that like the finer things in the hobby, though. They like the realistic stuff, or they, you know, they don't want to have old engines that, you know, smell like ozone and don't run very well and are noisy and stuff, and I totally respect that. If, if that's what you like, that's fine, but there are some other people in the hobby who buy those sorts of things, and they think that that is, in fact, the right way to go about model railroading. And uh, it's quite silly in my opinion, because you could have all the best stuff and still be miserable with it, in which case it's like, well, why did you even get into model railroading to begin with? So, you know, it's like you're building, you're, you're painting roads on your layout or, I don't know, putting something that's out of place on your layout. It doesn't matter just as long as you like it. If you want to get into the hobby, just have fun and do whatever you want. SMT, I love the channel. I've learned a lot. I'm very happy to hear that. Something I'm still struggling to find is HON30 or HON30 locomotives at this point. I'm just going to have to take other models and 3D print the shells to make the HON30. I like the realistic stuff, but I also enjoy the older stuff, just doing whatever. Yeah, it's awesome. Hey, SMT, I've been a subscriber to your channel since February 2020. Hi Harrison, this is my first live stream since probably last year. Glad to finally be able to watch one again. Welcome. I have all sorts of engines. I have all different electric engines. I have an Acela Japanese O, a series train, also a class 403 German train. HO narrow gauge is severely lacking in content. Yeah, narrow gauge model trains are, are kind of like a niche in a niche. You don't, I don't know. I think HO is the most common scale and you know, I can kind of see why it's so easy to get into. I read an article of a guy who had a problem with the 30 
he scratch built a car and used the mold to duplicate with plastic at home. I know you live near Montreal, but have you ever been to Idaho in the western USA? Never been to Idaho. I was uh, to Ohio, though, and Pennsylvania. Ever been to Philadelphia? I can't say I have. Have you ever seen a CSX train in person? Quite a few times uh, out in Maine. Ever been at the California State Railroad Museum? I wasn't uh, able to go there. I was in LA uh, back in 2013, but our uh, trip wasn't long enough. But that was uh, something that uh, if I ever went back, I'd probably want to see. What part of Ohio? I'm originally from there. Glorious Cincinnati. How many cars can your strongest engine pull? Likely over 50. I want to make a dirt track for my layout. I can't find any HO scale sprint cars for the track. Any ideas where I could find some? Unfortunately, I, I don't know. Rob Fornar, uh, you're ignoring me. I'm not ignoring you. The comments are uh, just organized a certain way. It's in Sacramento, not LA for the train museum. Yeah, I know, I was just, I was in LA, and since Sacramento is, you know, not impossibly far away, it was an option while I was there, but I didn't have enough time. Have you tried the lollies from the B class? I don't know why they sent those, uh, I can't say I have. Seems to be a trend when you buy a high-end locomotive, they send candy. Because it was the same thing when I bought the uh, Wakefield train. They, they, I think, sent some chocolates or something. Which is kind of funny. Hey, SMT, are you planning to install working traffic lights on the layout? Technically, I already have them. I don't put these on terribly often because I don't want to burn them out, but well, maybe they're broken. Oh, yeah, there we go. I think the contacts inside the switch are a little messed because not all the lights seem to want to work. Oh, yeah, I'm getting them back. Get the green one going there. There we go. I just need to play around with the switch a little bit to get them working right. Those locomotives sound like a lawnmower. Yeah, they kind of do.
Sounds like you have a short in the power torque motor. Well, it wouldn't be with these. These are uh, AHMs. Wait, uh, so that little street light does function properly. Not very well, but yeah, it does work. That was one of the original parts of this layout. I I got this as a gift. I, I can't remember. It might have been a Christmas thing, but yeah, me and my dad back in the day were under the layout wiring that thing up. I'm not going to lie. It was a nightmare to wire at the time because the wires were so tiny that trying to splice them was really difficult. But we eventually got it done and it really seemed like uh, quite the accomplishment. <laughs> Uh, can you run a Canadiana engine? Sure. I guess we'll try to run this thing. Which, if I recall correctly, was actually not running very well last time, but we'll try it anyway. That seems bad. This thing lose traction tires or something? Seems like it's sitting really low on the track. I don't know. Let's try to pull some cars here. It sounds sad. <laughs> it sounds like a kettle boiling. Can you speak fluent French? Uh, unfortunately not. I should be able to, but uh, no, I need to learn. Hey, SMT, what is in the valley part of the layout under the bridges? Oh, this thing just started running properly. I uh, always wondered about that. It's uh, sort of like a rapids. We got all this. There used to be some canoers on here. I don't know. Looks like those got pulled out for some reason. definitely like a gear inside this is snagging because it's just funny that it will speed up like that and then it starts up again. Have you ever considered adding a mini hobby shop to your layout? There actually is one. And it is one of these here. One of these is a hobby shop. I can't remember which. hobby shop with an interior that would be really nice to build like a whole mini layout inside it smt do you keep the boxes the trains come in uh no i usually end up throwing away a lot of the boxes for a while i was keeping the boxes of uh the leftover cardboard there but um there's too much of it so i had to start getting rid of it 
When will you do a GoPro camera tour? I don't know. Probably when I, whenever I get all this done, be a nice way to uh, show off all the new uh, details. What's going on with your spiral track? What's the slope? This? Well, there's not really many planned for it. It's basically finished. I have to do the downtown core there, though. Hey, SMT, did you know that they're going to be proper high-speed trains in the United States in the near future near Florida and Texas? I heard something about that. Be curious to see how they uh, go about building that. Be really nice if uh, Canada chose to do the same thing. It's been a huge debate for many, many years. The high-speed rail project hasn't really gone anywhere so far, but as I said, it would be nice. You Quebecois. Um, yeah, I mean, I've lived in Quebec my entire life, and uh, some of my family is uh, French Canadian. I don't know what's going on with this coupler here. I have some tea. I have a CSXSD 40-3 that I dropped, and the back drive does not work, but the front does. Do you think I could send it to you to fix and then send it back, or should I fix it myself? If uh, you're not comfortable fixing something like that yourself, uh, I'd either contact the manufacturer, or if you have a hobby shop in your area, bring it there. What likely happened is your the drive shaft going to that truck has just popped out and uh, it would really just be a matter of putting it back in. That's usually what fails. Hopefully nothing else is broken. If it's a Bachman, the damage could be a little more severe just because of how the truck is secured into the engine. But uh, yeah, if, if you're confident opening it up, just open it up because it's probably not a very hard, it's probably not something too difficult to fix. I wish this thing had a coupler. The thing I'm really finding out today is that I have too many pieces of equipment that do not have couplers. I need to sort that out at some point. Pretty sure this thing does. Time to KD up. I think that that is it. And that should be a lot easier now because um, somebody sent a whole bunch of parts in and I was about to throw away the cardboard and, and I noticed that it had some weight to it. So I dug through the box and lo and behold, there's a package of Katie's in it. I couldn't believe that. So yeah, I'll be able to do some upgrades on some things. I already have a little bit. SMT, guess what? I'm making an entire truss bridge in my backyard. Is that for uh, 
one of those, not layouts, but railroads that you can actually ride on the model trains. Why do all the engines on your shelf seem to have issues? I mean, the vast majority of the stuff I buy is used, you know, I buy it in like junked condition. So it's just, uh, you know, when, you, when you're buying engines for five, ten dollars usually they are missing couplers and things like that and I forget to put new couplers on it and then that's why uh, I have problems. So I don't know. It probably does seem like the majority of my stuff has problems and I'm not gonna lie, a lot of it does, which is just something to expect with uh, older locomotives, but there are a fair amount in the collection which are rock solid, they never fail. I have mostly horn hook couplers, a few KD couplers, so I put different couplers on the same car. It acts as a transfer car. Yeah, that's what I did uh, as well with this thing. This originally had uh, KDs on both sides, but I decided to uh, throw a horn hook on one. It works pretty well. Do you have any stock cars? I don't think so. Do you have any high-end locomotives? Yeah, I've got a few. Uh, this one's a Lilliput. These are both Broadway, L or no, not Broadway Limited, um, Bowser. Most of the ones on this shelf are, are high-end. I mean, there are some old blue boxes in here, but like a lot of these are pretty good. These are all River Rossies. I don't think I'd consider those super high-end, kind of middle of the pack. When these were new, these were all high-end, but as time goes on, the technology's kind of advanced past them a little bit. Still great locomotives uh, to work on, but uh, I wouldn't call them the most reliable. They are high end, yeah. I'm, in in the seventies, I can see how they would have been the best out there. But uh, yeah, in today's day and age, I mean, the newer ones have better detail and more reliable drives. But uh, yeah, Decisions high end. Yeah, I agree with that. I also got Cato and I don't know what are some other good brands in there. Rapido. A couple Athern uh, Genesis is too. SMT, what's your least favorite locomotive or train company? Bachman. It's, it's too bad, like, you know, I don't entirely hate Bachman. If you can find Bachman products at a proper price, like on sale, um, they can be okay. The only thing is that, like, Bachman in the 80s, they were, you know, rolling out not very good engines. So, you know, they had all the nylon gears and everything. Like, they were train set trains, and, and that's fine, um because they were being sold real cheap. But then what happened in the 90s is they started building better drives and then they actually transferred their high-end drives over to their low-end locomotives, So, but they didn't bring their prices up. So for a while, you had really high-quality drives in starter set trains, you know, pretty decent for the time. And uh, I was a huge fan of Bachman back 
you know, in the early 2010s, you know, the 2000s and 2010s, like, great company. Um, and their stuff had quality issues, undoubtedly. You know, it's not the highest end, but the prices were so low that it was impressive. And then what happened was, it's like, around the mid-2010s, around, like, 2014, 2015, Bachman just started raising their prices, and they have not stopped ever since. So Bachman's prices, in my opinion, are near what you would pay for a high-end locomotive, but the quality is way lower. So, you know, it's a price-to-quality ratio, and I just don't find that they're um, such a budget-friendly company anymore, unfortunately. I'm not really sure what to run next. Can you run the Fox Valley Hiawatha? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for answering my question, SMT. My pleasure. The daylight's not doing so well. Yeah, unfortunately not. Also, apparently the high waffle cannot handle the S curve. So, near goal is to rip this curve out. That way, I can start running trains on it again. I kind of wondered if this was a, a good idea or not, but uh, yeah, we'll see. POV, it's 2013, the best year. I mean, 2013 uh, for me was was decent. I don't remember it being spectacular, but uh, yeah, it was a fine year. Looks like we have got a super chat, folks. If I can click on it. Controller Packers, weird question, but can you put my Peora freight car in there? I think it's Atlas. Yeah, um... I wonder where I put that. You still have nickel plate. Um, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I wonder where I put that. I feel like I left that car on the layout somewhere. Because that thing was pretty cool. It's not in there. Hmm. I don't know where it is right now. I'll have to go on a look for that. Can you please run the orange and green engine? Orange and green. Oh my goodness, Gerald Rote. Uh, hey, SMT, can you run your Hershey set you have? P.S. Uh, what? With what I sent you by Katie Couplers. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks a bunch. <laughs> I uh, haven't seen uh, your comments in here in a while. I was kind of surprised to see that. Thanks uh, so much for the super chat. Well, I guess we'll try to run the Hershey set. Unfortunately, I haven't fixed that up yet, but uh, I guess we'll go at it anyway. Can you run a Southern Pacific Diesel? Yeah, we might be able to run a Shark Nose later. But first, we'll get that Hershey set going. Uh, I want to see what's going on here. I like to buy 50 packs of Katie's. 
That might be the way to do it. I sent it in an atlas box. It was highly detailed. I remember it very well. I just don't know where on the layout it is. But yeah, that was a beautiful piece of equipment. I thought I had taken it out of the box and put it in the freight yard, though. Hmm. Yeah, if I recall correctly, like that unboxing wasn't even like that long ago. I think it was like last fall. Always watching, just not commenting. You know, I'm happy to see you're still watching the videos there. Let's see what out of this Hershey set actually has couplers and everything else. That one. Yeah, I need to restore the set. I think all the Hershey cars here are uh, damaged in one way or another. That one's missing a wheel. That one's missing a wheel. This one's got all of its wheels, but no coupler. That one's missing a coupler. Missing a coupler. Missing a wheel. Another one missing a wheel. I don't know. Maybe I'll just run it with my uh, current Hershey stuff. When did that happen? Hmm, I don't remember breaking that. Okay, run the Canadian National train with stripes. All right. Run the E8. Let's see if I can find that Atlas car. I just, I do not have a clue where that went. I wish I could super chat SMT, but I can't. Oh, well. Nobody should ever feel obligated to super chat. It's very generous if anybody does, but... Uh, I'm just happy to see people in here, frankly. Perk... Uh, Peoria or Perkin Union. Oh, no. Oh, I forgot about the cars on the layout. Hmm, let's push those over here, I guess. Well, that went about as good as usual. Ever been to Hershey Park? No, I haven't. Have you ever had a model train burn up or overheat badly? Yeah, that's happened a few times. There's been a few videos where that's actually occurred. I guess that's broken too. Oh, wait a minute. I think I 
Let's see what's going on here. Good. SMT, what's the freight car behind the Hershey factory? I think it's a Boston and Maine. Yes, it is. I guess I should check here to see if maybe the car's out here. SMT, have you ever repaired a high-end locomotive? I have a brass Overland diesel. One of the last releases in the drive shaft is not connecting to the flywheel. Any ideas? I haven't worked on too many high-end locomotives, and to uh, be completely honest with you, they tend to be a lot more difficult to work on. But, uh, yeah, drive shaft not connecting to the motor. I would probably check to make sure that whatever is holding the truck itself in place is doing its job right. Um, because in a lot of cases, the truck is, you know, held in by a clip or on a Bachman engine, for example, it's held in by a screw. There's something holding it up. And if whatever that is is not doing its job right, the truck might be a little bit more forward than it should be, which would create a little bit too much space. And then the drive shaft might be able to pop out because it's not as far as in as it should be. That's the only thing I could think of without actually having a look at the model. My five-year-old brother threw my $100 SD40-2 and it broke. Eh, I'm sorry to hear that. That happened to me years ago. Um, not with a sibling, but there was this uh, younger person over and they decided to pick up my Acela and throw it across the room. I, I don't know why. I wasn't actually uh, down here when that happened, but... Uh, I had a buddy over, and he's like, yeah, somebody just, like, threw one of your trains, and I was like, oh, that can't be good, so I came running in here, and, yeah, of course, it was the Acela, so. The Acela actually survived, though. All the parts didn't break. They just, they, the, the thing came apart, but nothing actually broke, so I just put it all back together. A few times where a Bachman engine has uh, done something impressive, and then, uh, yeah, a couple of years later, that same engine flew off the layout because I was running it too fast. And I uh, put it back together a second time. Mark Bass, am I banned? I don't think so, because I can read your comment. What's your opinion on Southern Pacific? I don't know if there's a railroad that had more colorful paint schemes. I mean, a daylight scheme, I think, has to be one of the best schemes that they ever made. I know you were pissed when you heard that happened. Yeah, I wasn't happy about it. Especially because, uh, you know, I think she was like eight or something like that in her reaction. Like, she got mad over it. And, uh, you know, I went and got her mom down here, and she changed pretty quickly and was all of a sudden all apologetic. It's like, oh, that's nice when you're in trouble, then you change. But, no, uh, that's... Being young, I guess. Um, 
Yeah, that's no good. I don't understand why this just got stuck. Here's why it derailed. You need 22 radius curves. I don't think that that's the issue. I think the problem is just my track work is not great. Like all of this really, when whenever I connect up this part of the layout and redo these curves, really need to focus on making sure this is even. Because what happened was is I built this with wood, which um, I think had absorbed moisture. So when I put it on, the table was perfectly flat. It was right on. And then what ended up happening was the wood warped. And so the track was no longer on an even surface and it made these curves uneven. So, you know, I've tried to kind of bring the level up by stuffing cardboard and things like that under it, but you can still see it's not perfectly even. Like you see how the track kind of like starts to dip around here. So, so that's why there's a lot of derailments that are always happening here. What's the biggest engine beside the Santa Fe that you made? Uh, I, I'm not sure. The Canadiana, I guess. I didn't really build that engine, though. I just repainted it. I have to say that I'm really becoming a big fan of building my layouts with styrofoam as the top layer because provided you have a good frame under it, it will stay perfectly even. Or maybe it won't stay perfectly even, but the styrofoam isn't really prone to warping just as long as it has proper support. So even if the wood's uneven, the styrofoam will prevent uh, it from being so much so that it will cause derailments and things like that. Yeah, I don't know. There's a, there's a lot of this layout that I think needs to be uh, redone. A quarter of an inch uh, plywood does tend to warp in some cases. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, any thickness of plywood really can warp, if, even if you screw it down really well. You know, wood's just one of those materials that... I mean, I know everything, you know, it technically can warp, but, you know, I bet if you built a layout out of, like steel, it probably wouldn't have as many problems as wood. Styrofoam is too susceptible to accidental damage, no thanks. Been there, done that, but I hear it works well for a lot of guys. Yeah, I, I, I suppose so. I haven't had that issue so far with building my uh, Hershey factory, but I've also only had it for like two years, so maybe it's not a good example. But the, the parts of it that I do like is, yeah, it's not prone to the whole, you know, moisture issue. And uh, it also is very easy to actually dig out. So, like, for example, this parking lot's about a quarter of an inch lower than the rest of the facility. That's how it was in real life for whatever reason. And if I built that out of wood, I don't think I could have lowered it, which would have made it less realistic. So it's pretty nice for that. And you can sand it. I think the only thing I don't like the styrofoam for is that if you're laying down track on it, you can't really drive pins into it because the styrofoam doesn't hold on tight enough. glued the track. That's what a lot of people do. It's probably the most realistic way to lay down track. I use a lot of old HO scale Fleshman track. Ties made out of rubber coated pasteboard and stamp sheet metal rails. 
I've never worked with uh, that kind of track, but I'd imagine it's very tried and true. I'm going with Unitrack next time. Uh, nuts to Cork and Flex track. Yeah, I can kind of see that. Like, Unitrack is very expensive, and, you know, to be completely honest, I've never worked with it myself, so, you know, I've just, this is going through the opinions of other people. But the nice thing about it is that, you know, the, the curves are going to be for sure 22. You know, there's no question about it versus if you're working with a flex track, even if you have a tool, trying to make a, you know, corner a specific radius is going to be a lot trickier. And even with snap track, there's not a guarantee that you've done it right because you have to be very, very careful lining up the joiners. And if you don't do it right, you know, you might have like a, a, a kind of a corner in the track and that can happen pretty easily. So at least with Unitrack, the roadbed connects as well, so you know the track is, in fact, you know, all linked up properly. Can you run the Australian engine? Yeah, sure, why not? like the Australian engine. Yeah, me too. Nerf cat. He's probably upstairs sleeping somewhere. I'm not from Australia, but those are so cool. Ah, I think it could be one of the coolest engines uh, Australia had. I was wondering why it derailed. It was my fault. I forgot to set the switch back. Whoops. Somebody was requesting that I run a CSX locomotive, so I guess we'll get this one going. A lot of derailments going on. And unfortunately running it through the switch didn't seem to rerail it. I think running these go cars up on this line was a bit of a bad idea. Can you run the big boy? Um, yeah, sure. I think I'm going to end off the live stream. 
kind of soon actually, but I did say I was going to run that in the beginning, so I don't see why not. If you're only able to stick with one model train, what would it be and why? I mean, I think it would have to be the Hiawatha just because it has so much uh, sentimental value and is, I think, the rarest engine in my entire collection. Be a little bit of a frustrating one, I think, to be the only one I could run just because it's not terribly reliable and parts and maintenance... Uh, parts are really expensive and I have to do a lot of maintenance on it, but, uh, I mean, it's a really nice engine. I don't know, be almost like trying to daily drive a Jaguar, like, you know, it's beautiful, not very practical. Anyways, here's the CSX locomotive, which I, uh, said I'd run earlier. Controller Packers, have those packages arrived, SMT? I think they did, um... Oh, hold on, sorry. I think they did. The only thing is that uh, I don't want to show them right now on a live stream because I haven't peeled the addresses um, from where they came from off, so I don't want to go around uh, leaking everybody's address. But, um, yeah, there are several packages arrived recently, so I, uh, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure that happened. Do you have a favorite locomotive? Probably the Wakefield train. I don't know in terms of running, though, which would be my favorite. Um, yeah, the big boy. See, I'm pretty sure this is the one that runs best. Is the CSX locomotive the cheapest Amazon locomotive? Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, the prices have gone up on those, so I don't even know if they're still the cheapest, but uh, it's good to see it's still running really well. I'm, I'm so far a big fan of it. Now, Walters, their engines are not as cheap as I'd like to see. I think they could be selling those things for, I don't know, $20 less. I'd probably promote them a lot more. Yeah, this is not running very well. Yeah, the question is, can the big boy negotiate the S-curve? See, this just goes to show you, this, this big boy locomotive can negotiate the curve, but the Bachman one can't, and it's a smaller locomotive. It's like, there's a lot of people that really knock River Rossi locomotives for being unrealistic, and, and part of that has to do with the fact that the wheels are pizza cutters, the flanges are ginormous, but it certainly helps a bit. I 
Well, my package to you is wrapped in my in birthday wrap, so that's going to be an interesting unboxing. Huh. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I got any uh, in birthday wrap, so maybe not. Is it me or is the big boy locomotives one of the ones that works best? This thing's a bit fickle, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, I have two of these River Rossi big boys and all my River Rossi steam engines have had the same problem, which is that you seem to have to keep torquing down all the bolts. And I don't ever wanna over torque them because I'm always worried I'm gonna end up stripping them out and then I'm screwed, but uh, they seem to come loose over time and then uh, they fall apart and they become unquartered and you have to put them back. So I've had a lot of that going on with this thing, but other than that, um, yeah, it's been a pretty reliable engine. Hudson, a lot of people still want the Hudson. I guess uh, everything inside the box is wrapped in B-Day wrap. Oh, okay, I thought you meant like the outside was and I was like, huh, oh, I've never seen that before. Uh, yeah, I guess we can run the Hudson one more time, and then uh, I think I'll call it a night, because it is uh, beginning to get kind of late. It's gonna be one of the best engines I, I think I've bought because it runs so well. Somebody must have spent so much time putting this thing together. The only problem it had was when I very first bought it, the current draw was super high and it turned out what had happened was that whoever had this thing before me had just clearly put like, you know, a hundred hours or something like that of running on it because I've never seen a motor with so much carbon in it. I, I'm amazed it didn't burn out but yeah, I cleaned, cleaned up the motor and lo and behold, it runs mint. It's so quiet. And the current draw is super low. It's a little higher right now, but that's just because you got a couple cars with lights on the tracks. You're on the trolley. Whoops. Well, I think that's going to be about it for the uh, live stream. I hope you all enjoyed. I'd like to thank you all so much for uh, joining me this evening and running some trains. And with that, I hope you all have a wonderful night.